Hey guys, this is Karina here. First off, I would like to thank everyone for coming and watching this video first. And also for all of those in the Facebook group who actually requested the video. This is actually gonna be my first video and this is also the first time that I have done a picture like this. I think it was super cool. My client, which if you see here is the third generation, she is the one that actually came up and showed me that she wanted that idea. So I tried to make it, make it happen for her and I'm so happy that I did because she loved it and everybody else loved it as well. Like I said, this is my first time doing this, so it's not completely perfect, but I guess you guys can have a sort of an idea. And I'm gonna tell you what I learned as well um, as I was editing and as, as I, and as I was taking it as well. So we're going to start. Uh, this is basically what the first picture will look like. It is ideal, as I learned, that the frame or the picture is blank just so that it's easier to kind of um, select it with the quick selection tool. Second tip is, as you can tell here, um, the grandma was holding the picture frame with her fingers on the white part. I would suggest, now that I have learned, that the whoever's holding the, the frame have them hold it with their fingers off of the white part or whatever color you guys are gonna have, but more on the actual frame itself so that it is easier to cut out this rectangle and select it basically. But like I said, this is the first time, so I guess I have to work with what I have, right? So then this is the, sec the third generation actually second generation this is the third generation and this is the last generation last generation doesn't need the frame because there's no one that comes after her so let's begin now this is a little tip always make a copy of your first your basically your image so to make a copy is control J so Next, we are going to quick use the quick selection tool here. And we're going to click on the layer we the layer the copied layer. And we're going to zoom in. Zoom in is control Windows is control plus but I'm not sure what it is for Mac. So whatever the <laughs> equivalent to that is, I'm not a Mac user. So we're going to start um, I think we can use a, I think about 25, the size 25, and we're going to use the plus actually. So we're just going to make it go around. It kind of automatically does it, but you're going to have to look over it and fix it a little bit. I, I actually went to the side and I let it go and it actually automatically uh, detected the edges of of the frame we don't need this here so i'm going to press the takeaway subtraction actually we're going to add that in okay so as you see here the edges look pretty good maybe if i can get it all the way to the edge here or maybe that looks a little better here looks good looks good so the this is where i say that it is better if their fingers are on the frame because of this situation we have here. If it was just, if they were, if their fingers were on the frame, it would be so much easier to just have it go straight down. But like I said, we gotta work with what we have. I'm gonna zoom in a little more so I can see exactly what we're working with. Again, that was control plus, holding them at the same time. And let's see what we're gonna do. So we're going to, try to get her finger in her nails so it's not cut off and I'm just pressing and kind of like tracing it out and see what it comes out with um, this is gonna be the second time that I do this because obviously the first time I didn't do the video I, because it was after the fact that you know I didn't I wasn't expecting to do a video of this so here we go 
I'm just trying to fix it a little bit here. I'll probably fast forward this a little bit so you guys don't have to. And I'm just clicking wherever I think her finger. The thing is that there's a shadow too, so it's kind of detecting the shadow. But I don't want the shadow. I just want her fingers. So I'm just going to fast forward a little bit until I actually get it right. Okay, so I'm just gonna leave it like that for now. This is just so you guys have an idea. If you guys have a better way of doing this, then by all means. But like I said, this is the, the, the way I know how to do it. Um, uh, so I'm basically fixing it by adding or subtracting wherever I feel needs to it for it to be done this looks pretty good here on the bottom the side everything looks pretty good I'm just double checking making sure oh no what did I do so in order to go back or undo whatever you just made I don't know if some of you may be beginners some of you may know shortcuts some of you might not uh, these are some that I know. I'm not very experienced in Photoshop, but this is what I know. So you're going to press Control Z and that'll just come out so that you don't mess anything up. All right, this looks pretty good. So next step, what we're going to do, since we already have this in a pretty, it looks okay. Uh, we're going to press, we're going to make sure this layer is selected and we are going to click this mask button. And we're actually going to invert it so that whenever you put in the picture, you just press invert here. Whenever you put in the next picture, it will, as you can see here, I have yellow on top of black. That's why I have to invert it so that the black is in the background. So I, I don't want it to be on the foreground. I want it to be in the background because if I put it in the foreground, it's going to cover grandma we don't want that we want her to be inside of the frame so with that done we are going to i already had my other images open so we're going to unlock this picture we are going to shift oh make sure we have this move button <clears throat> move cursor uh shift and click on the picture we're going to drag it to the first generations picture and we're going to I'm still holding the shift button and I'm clicking it as well and we're gonna let it go and so that will come on top but we actually want it to be below so we're going to put it here under we're, we always want grandma first right so let me zoom out so you guys can see it all right, so she we put her under and we're just going to kind of fit her in. And if you just noticed, I don't know if you know, obviously there's a lot of different levels of expertise here. Um, as you notice, I click this button when I first went to adjust her. The reason why I pressed that link little chain button is so because if I don't if I don't do that you see how it you can move it around and it's just gonna distort the image just click that and it's gonna bring it back to the original basically size or proportions so I'm just trying to adjust it so that it can fit nicely so we don't have any edges Make sure it is all in there. Make sure the frame is in there. So I think that looks pretty good. I'm just going to move it a little bit. Let's see how it looks. I don't see any white. Okay, that looks pretty good. And we're basically going to keep doing the same for the next generations. So we're going to remember quick selection tool click the layer you actually want to work on 
zoom in so we can have an idea of where we're gonna be moving. You see the same thing happened with this picture. Uh, her fingers were inside of the frame. I wish I would have known that so, I, so the video can be a little bit more useful, but you know, hopefully you guys won't make the same mistake, but I'm happy I made the mistake so that I can let you guys know what to not do, basically. So we're just going to kind of fix it. This can be a little tricky. So I'm just going to fast forward so you guys don't have to because I already went through the first time. So I'm just going to work on it. I'm going to fast forward really quick. All right, guys, so I kind of try to do the best that I can. You know, you kind of don't want this area here. Like I said, it's just not the ideal, but okay. So let's keep going. So I already uh, used my quick selection tool to basically cut out the frame. And then we are going to do the same thing. Press this, invert it. It's basically a repetition. That's what's so easy about it. Now we are going to get the next generation's picture. Make sure you have the correct cursor on. I unlock the layer, shift, click down, left click down and drop it in. Let it go. Let's zoom out a little bit so we can see what we're working with. This one is going to go under the second generation and we're going to click the border, lock it, drag it down and position it. What I would suggest is when you're actually taking the pictures, um, there's, there's a few little tips that I have. Uh, so first one is that obviously put the tips of their or their whole have their fingers on the actual frame and not the inside of the picture second tip is whatever color frame you are using try that try to have the inside um, frame color be a totally different so make sure if it's a black frame use a white interior if it's a beige frame maybe if you can use like a brown like a darker color not a lighter color so that it's easier to to um, cut out the frame with the quick selection tool if you're gonna use the quick selection tool. Next one is the way that they are positioning the frame where their ha hands are. Uh, unless you actually like the different ways they're holding it. In my case, they hold they held the frame differently in different positions. So I mean, it looks nice, or if you want it actually all of them to hold it the same exact way. I don't have a problem with them holding it different ways, just so it's not so basically symmetrical. There's like a little, makes a little bit interesting. And another one is when you're taking the pictures, make sure you're taking some kind of zoomed in like the grandma's is, and as you're getting closer to the bottom, make them make sure they're a little bit zoomed out but you can take some more zoomed in and some more zoomed out and then you can work with the pictures that look best depending on on the frame and stuff so i i chose these because i already know which ones i was going to use but i had to like for this generation i had to i had a zoom more one that was more zoomed in but it wasn't fitting the whole frame her whole frame inside of the picture so I had to use one that was a little bit more zoomed out so that I can actually fit the whole picture in and she's not basically cropped out or anything. So I think that looks pretty good. And then now we're going to do the final one. But again, I'm going to 
I'm going to fast forward this so you guys don't have to do it since I already did the last two the same exact way. We're just gonna zoom in here. And it's basically doing the same. Oh, here, this is actually a better one because basically the only thing was her nails that was in the picture, which was pretty awesome. So the, that wasn't too much of an issue. So I'm just gonna do the same and I'm just gonna fast forward here really quick so that so you guys already know what to do. So here it goes. That looks pretty good. So next is the fourth generation. So we're gonna do the same. We're gonna press add layer mask, double click, invert, and we're gonna go get the, finally the fourth generation. Change, change your cursor. Unlock the image, shift, press down, and we're gonna put it here. Let it go, zoom out, and lock it. Position it where it belongs. Oh, we gotta position it where it belongs. Give me a second, this goes here. Remember, you always have to have them in order. This order is very important or else you're going to be very confused. So we always want grandma on the top. Or grandpa. Let me zoom in a little bit so I can see. So with um, the fourth generation, this little girl, I actually had like two or three different shots. I just put in, I was, when I was actually doing it the first time, I was just seeing which one looks better. Uh, looks like this zoomed in one looks a little better because, well, the one with the tighter crop, because since that, her image is going to be so small compared to the rest, we kind of want to see her. So we just got to make sure that she's filling in that frame. We can probably fix fix hers as well. We don't want to we don't want to make her look squished or anything. So we just got to make sure that we lock those images. All right, let's see. All right. So it looks like we're pretty much done. I know it looked like a lot of work, but it's actually not. It's very repetitive. So if you guys follow those tips that I gave you and use those little shortcuts, I promise it will be super easy. Uh, you won't go through all of the work that I had to go through. Hopefully you guys do learn from my mistakes. So I'm totally fine with making them as long as you guys get to learn from them and don't, and don't um, repeat those mistakes just so that your workflow would be a little bit easier. But, you know, that's the fun part about photography and growing as you go. So this is your final image. You know, you can go ahead and export it or save however you usually do. Um, if you like, I would suggest to save it as a uh, Photoshop file. Just so just in case your client wants a little change or anything if you don't have to do the whole thing all over again so remember to always save two two files the original uh photoshop file and uh, and your jpeg however you're going to save it or export it or whatever uh these images that i had taken i actually edited them in lightroom first and then i brought them into photoshop so this is the one that i had originally made i know it's a little different but you can see 
and so yeah there goes the picture i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you guys have any other questions or anything else i'm gonna be i since i just started this youtube channel then i'm gonna be uh, putting in and uploading videos with little tips and little shortcuts that I know that probably can be useful for those that don't already know. There's so many different things you can do with Photoshop and even Lightroom that not everybody knows and could probably make your life a little bit easier. If you guys have any tips for me that I can learn, please feel free to go ahead and comment um, under this video, leave your tips, leave your comments, leave your feedback as you know, we are growing, we are learning every day. So if you guys can help me learn and I can help you learn, then that's my ultimate goal. Uh, thank you very, very, very much for all of your support and for your interest and in how I made this picture. And hopefully, um, we can continue working together and please feel free if you guys were actually able to achieve this using my video if you guys can just send me how your image came out to my email i'm not even sure if you can even add pictures i don't think you can add pictures to the comment section or to the video uh, you can actually send it to me through my email um, i'll put it in the comments in the description and so if you guys could please subscribe that would really 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 uh validate that i'm doing everything good so thank you very much and you guys have an awesome new year's and we'll see you soon thank you